Good evening once again. Hi, this is Dave Coonan with the MCT Players. Tonight, we are presenting to you part one of Alice in Wonderland, followed by part two next week. Enjoy the show. The MCT Players, under the direction of David Coonan, present Alice in Wonderland. The MCT players tonight essay a new type of experimentation with this, the first part of its dramatization of Lewis Carroll's classic Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. The music, which has been specially chosen for the broadcast by David Tunin, will function not only as radio music usually does in setting scenes and moods, but will also suggest various sound effects. Mr. Coonan, the usual director, who adapted and is directing this production, and all of us, the MCT players, would like to know what you, the listener, thinks about this. The MCT players present Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland, a fairy story of the 19th century. A bit of gossamer flimsy and a fantasy for the children. Alice, a fairy story peopled with human beings, animals that talk like men. Do they mirror men who act like animals? I do not know. I merely wrote a simple story about a little girl for a little girl. Half the world has, for 72 years, called it childish nonsense. The other half, significant social satire. To me, it has always been simply Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Alice. In Wonderland. Ah, Alice, don't fidget so. I beg your pardon, sister, but it is so very dull today. Isn't it tea time yet? Not quite. We'll go into tea when I finish the chapter I'm reading. Ah, why don't you go pick some daisies? Oh, it's so dreadfully hot to pick day. Ah, daisies. Sister, look! Down there in the grass, a white rabbit. <laughs> Sister, he has a waistcoat on. And look, he's taking a watch out of it. Oh, Alice, what nonsense. Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late. Sister, did you hear that? Hear what? The rabbit, he looked at his watch and then he spoke. Oh, Alice, your imagination. <laughs> Alice, Alice, come back here. Where are you going? I've, I've got to see the rabbit again, sister. Oh dear. He just pops into that hole under the hedge. But it's such a very large rabbit hole. Perhaps I could squeeze through. There, I can still see him. He's down at the end. Oh, I must hurry, I must, oh, oh, I'm, I'm falling, I'm falling. Falling down what seems to be a very deep well. Either the well was very deep, or she fell very slowly, for she had plenty of time to look about and notice that the sides of the well were filled with cupboards and bookshelves. After such a fall as this, I shall think nothing of tumbling down the stairs. Why, I wouldn't say anything about it, even if it fell off the top of the house. Which is very likely true. Down, down, down. Alice became very drowsy, and she had almost fallen asleep when... Oh, oh! Gracious, I landed! I ought to be hurt, but I don't seem to be. Now, where is the white rabbit? <laughs> oh, there he goes! Oh, my ears and whiskers, how late it's getting! Turn the corner of the passage. Oh, I must have lose him. But when Alice turned the corner, the rabbit was no longer to be seen. She found herself in a long, low hall with doors all around it, all locked. 
in the middle was a little three-legged table of solid glass, but nothing on it but a tiny golden key. Alice tries the key in various doors of the hall, but either the locks are too large or the key is too small. Now she sees a little door about 15 inches high. She tries the little golden key in the lock, and it fits. Alice is opening the door, and now she is kneeling to look through the passage. It leads to a lovely garden, but she can't even get her head through the doorway. And even if my head would go through, it would be very little use without my shoulders. Oh, how I wish I could shut up like a telescope. I think I could, if only I knew how to begin. Alice is returning to the table now. She's looking for another key or perhaps a book of rules for shutting people up like telescopes. She doesn't find either, but there is a little bottle there. Which certainly wasn't here before. Around the neck of the bottle is a paper label with the words, drink me, beautifully printed on it, large letters. Drink me. Hmm, no, I'll look first and see whether it's marked poison. But the bottle was not marked poison, so Alice ventured to taste it and finding it very nice. It has, in fact, a sort of mixed flavor of cherry chard, custard, pineapple, roast turkey, toffee, and a hot buttered toast. She very soon finished it off. What a curious feeling. I must be shutting up like a telescope. She is shrinking. She is now only 10 inches high. She's about the size to go through the door into the lovely garden now. She's a little nervous, though afraid she might shrink too far. It might end, you know, in me going out altogether like a candle. I wonder what I should be like then. Fortunately, nothing more happened. But alas, for poor Alice, she had left the little golden key on the table. And though she could see it quite plainly through the glass, she was now much too small to reach it. Soon, her eye fell on a little glass box that was lying under the table. She opened it and found in it a very small cake on which the words, eat me, were beautifully marked in currants. Well, I'll eat it. And if it makes me grow larger, I can reach the key. And if it makes me grow smaller, I can creep under the door. So either way, I'll get into the garden. And I don't care much which happens. Which way, which way? She's holding her hand on the top of her head to feel which way she's growing. Curiouser and curiouser. She's so surprised, she quite forgets to speak good English. Now, I'm opening out like the largest telescope that ever was. Goodbye, feet. Ouch! Her head strikes against the roof of the hall, which is she is now more than nine feet high. She takes up the little golden key and hurries off to the garden door. Poor Alice. It was as much as she could do, lying down on one side to look into the garden with one eye. But to get through the little door was more hopeless than ever. She sat down and began to cry again. Oh. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself, a great big girl like you. She might well say this. To go on crying in this way. Stop this moment, I'll tell you. <laughs> but she went on just the same, shedding gallons of tears until there was a large puddle around her, about four inches deep and halfway reaching down the hall. After a time, she heard a little pattering of feet in the distance and she hastily dried her eyes as the white rabbit returned. This time, splendidly dressed, with a pair of white kid gloves in one hand and a large fan in the other. He came trotting along in a great hurry, muttering to himself as he came. Oh, the Duchess, the Duchess. Oh, won't she be savage if I've kept her waiting? If you please, sir. Ah, oh, oh, my ears and whiskers. Stop, you've got my gloves and 
your fan. Oh, oh. oh my ears and whiskers. Oh. And the white rabbit was gone. Alice took up the gloves, and as the hall was very hot, she started to fan herself. Gracious, I must be growing small again. I am. Now, I am only two feet high. I shall go out altogether. It must be the fan. <laughs> oh, that was a narrow escape. If I hadn't dropped that fan, it would have been the end of me. <laughs> but now I'm small enough to get through the door. And, and Alice finds herself up to her chin in salt water, swimming around in the pool of the tears that she had wept when she was about nine feet high. Oh, I wish I hadn't cried so much. I shall be punished for it now, I suppose by being drowned in my own tears. <laughs> that will be a queer thing to be sure. However, everything is queer today. Oh, what a fearful racket. It must be at least a walrus or a, a hippopotamus. Oh no, I forgot how small I've grown. <laughs> it's only a mouse. But it is bigger than I am. Oh, Mouse, do you know the way out of this pool? I'm very tired of swimming about here. Oh, Mouse, perhaps it doesn't understand English. I dare say it's a French mouse. Come over with William the Conqueror. <clears throat> we ask my shot. First sentence in Alice's weird French book uh, translation, where's my cat? The mouse didn't like the reference in the English or in the French or in the Chinese or the Japanese or sarcasm or. Oh, I beg your pardon. I quite forgot you didn't like cats. Not like cats? Oh, would you like cats if you were me? Well, perhaps not. But I do wish I could show you our cat, Dinah. She's such a capital one for catching mice. Oh, I do beg your pardon. We won't talk about her anymore if you'd rather not. We indeed. As if I could walk, talk on such a subject. Our family always hated cats. Nasty, low, vulgar things. Don't let me ever hear the name again. I won't indeed. I promise. Oh, very well then. Let us go to the shore and I'll tell you my, 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 my history and you'll understand why it is that I hate cats. It was high time to go for the pool was getting quite crowded with the birds and animals that had fallen into it. There were a duck and a dodo, a lorry and an eaglet, and several other curious creatures. Alice led the way, and the whole party swam ashore. They are indeed a queer-looking party as they assemble on the bank. The birds with the draggled feathers and the animals with their fur clingy closely to them, all dripping wet and cross and uncomfortable. The first question, of course, is how to get dry again and an argument ensues with the dodo, who seems to be a person of some authority, finally ends. Why, to all of you, if you really want to get dry, then the uh, best way is a, a caucus race. What is the caucus race? Why, the... The only way to explain it is uh, uh, da, to, to do it. And as you might like to try the thing yourself some winter day, I will tell you how the dodo managed it. First, it marked out a race course in sort of a circle. Though so it said the exact shape didn't matter. I mean, it's a circle, a square, a triangle, really, what difference does it make? You're still getting And then... Everybody was placed along the course, here and there. There was no one, two, three, and away, but they began running when they liked, and left off when they liked, so that it was not easy to know when the race was over. 
However, when they had been running half an hour or so, the dodo suddenly called out, The race is over! But who has won? Ooh. 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 Just, just a minute, just a minute, let me think. Everybody, everybody has won and all must have prizes. Prizes? But who has to get the prizes? Prizes, yeah. Prizes. Prizes. Mm. Why, why, she, of course. Me? Yes, you. you. You're going to give us prizes? Yay, prizes! 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 Alice had no idea what to do, and in despair, she put her hand in her pocket and pulled out a box of candy. Lucky uh, the salt water had not gotten into it. And handed them around as prizes. There, is act is, there was exactly one apiece all around. Oh, but, but she must have a prize herself, you know. Of course. What what else have you got in your pocket, little girl? Uh, um, oh, only a thimble. Wow! Ooh. 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 Hand it over here. There. Thank you. We beg your acceptance of this, uh, the elegant thimble. Hey. <laughs> And now, while we eat our prizes... I can't eat mine. It's a thimble. You're lucky. Oh, 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 I can't eat mine. It's too big. I'm, help, help, I'm choking, I'm choking. Quack, quack. Oh. Here, here, some of you. Oh. Pat is back, Pat is back. <laughs> <laughs> Mine. It's too small. I'm sorry. It's the best I could do. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Mouse, you promised, you know. Promised? Promised what? To tell me your history and why you hate you know what. Oh, mine is a long and sad tale. Oh, woe is me. I can see it's a long tale, oh mouse, but why is it sad? You insult me by talking such nonsense. Oh, I really meant nothing, but you're so easily offended, you know. I am afraid, I am very much afraid, that you are a waste of time. Oh, please come back and tell us your story. What a pity he wouldn't stay. I wish our Dinah were here. She'd soon fetch it back. And who is Dinah, if I might venture to ask the question? <laughs> Dinah's our cat, and she's a capital one for catching mice. And, oh, I wish you could see her after the birds. She'd eat a little bird as soon as look at it, and... <laughs> well, oh, <laughs> I wish I hadn't mentioned Dinah. But nobody seems to like her down here. And I'm sure she's the best cat in the world. Oh, my poor Dinah. I wonder if I shall ever see you anymore. Oh, <laughs> there's no sword in crying about this. I shall never get out of here unless I set about my right size again. But the great question is, how? Suddenly, I was not a large mushroom growing near about the same height as herself. And on top of it, a large blue caterpillar was sitting with his arms folded, quietly smoking a long hookah. The caterpillar took his languid time about noticing Alice. And oh, what are you? I, uh, I hardly know, sir. Just as present. At least I know who I was when I got up this morning. Mm, what do you mean by that? Explain yourself. 
I can't explain myself, I'm afraid, sir, because I'm not, I'm not myself, you see? No, I don't see. I'm afraid I can't put it more clearly, but for I can't understand it myself to begin with. And being so many different sizes in a day is very confusing. Uh, it isn't. If you changed as much as I have today, you'd feel a little <laughs> queer too. Not a bit. Well, perhaps your feelings are different, but it feels very queer to me. You? Well, who are you? I think you ought to tell me who you are first. Why? Oh, I'm afraid we're not getting anywhere at all. Come back here. I have something important to say. Well, what is it? Keep your temper. Is that all? Yes. Good day to you, dear. But, but... One side will make you grow taller, and the other side will make you grow shorter. One side of what? The other side of, of what? The <laughs> now... How can he tell which sides of the two mushrooms when it's perfectly round? Oh, maybe if I stretch my arms around as far as they can go and break off a bit of the edge with each hand, there. And now, which is which? I guess I'll try the right hand piece first. Oh, I'm getting smaller so quick. My chin hit my foot. I have to eat some of the left hand piece right away. Ooh, it is so hard to get my mouth open. There. Come, my head's free at last. As she grew larger, she saw across the top of the mushroom a little house about four feet high. I can never visit that lovely place if I grow to my full size, so I'd better stop here. She's nibbling a little on the right hand piece, and now a quick nibble on the left hand piece. She's now established at nine inches. As she approached the house, a fish dressed in a footman's livery came running out of the woods and rapped loudly on the door. It was opened by another footman in livery, who was really a frog. Alice crept behind a bush to listen as the fish footman presented a great letter, nearly as large as himself. For the Duchess, an invitation from the Queen to play croquet. From the Queen, an invitation for the Duchess to play croquet. They both bowed, and the curls of their wigs got entangled together. <laughs> Alice laughed so much at this, but then she, that she had to run back into the woods for fear of their hearing her. When she peeped out, the fish footman was gone, and the frog footman was sitting on the ground near the door, staring stupidly up to the sky. Alice went up to the door and knocked. There's no sort of use in knocking, and that for two reasons. First, because I'm on the same side of the door as you are, and second, because they're making so much noise inside that no one could possibly hear you. Please then, how am I to get in? There might be some sense in your knocking if we had the door between us. For instance, if you were inside, you might knock and I might let you out, you know. But how am I to get in? I shall sit here till tomorrow or the next day. Maybe. How am I to get in? Are you to get in at all? That's the first question, you know. It's really dreadful the way all you creatures argue. It's enough to drive one crazy. I shall sit here on and off for days and days. 
But what have I to do? Anything you like. Then I'll go in anyway. <laughs> the door leads into a large kitchen. It's full of smoke. The Duchess is sitting on a three-legged stool, nursing a baby. The cook is stirring a large cauldron of soup, and she throws pepper into it by the shakeful. A large cat is lying on the hearth, grinning from ear to ear. He doesn't sneeze, neither does the cook, but everyone else does. Achoo! Please, would you tell me why your cat grins like that? It's a Cheshire cat, and that's why. Pig! Were you speaking to me? No, I was speaking to this brat. Oh. Take that, and that, and that. Oh, be careful. Why are you throwing the pots and pans at the baby for? Well, that happens every afternoon at four o'clock. <laughs> oh, please mind what you're throwing. Cook, be careful, don't, oh. Oh, there goes his precious little nose. <laughs> oh, speak roughly to your little boy, achoo, and beat him when he sneezes. He only does it to annoy, achoo, because he knows it teases. Wow, 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 wow. 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 <laughs> Here. You may nurse to the bit if you like. Catch! <laughs> oh, please! I nearly dropped it! I must go and get ready to play croquet with the queen. Take that, you toad! Missed her again. If I don't take this child away with me, they're sure to kill it in a day or two. I would really be committing murder to leave it behind. <laughs> oh, don't squeal, my dear. That's not at all the proper way of expressing yourself. If you're going to turn into a pig, my dear, I'll have nothing more to do with you. Mind now. Now, what am I going to do when I get this creature home? <laughs> I guess there'll be no taking you home. You'll be happier out there in the woods. <coughs> if I had, had grown up, it would have made a dreadfully ugly child. But it makes rather a handsome pig, I think. And she began thinking over other children she knew might do very well as pigs when she was a little startled to see the Cheshire cat sitting in the bough of a tree a few yards off. Hello, Cheshire Puss. Yeah. Would you please tell me which way I ought to go from here? That depends a good deal on where you want to get to. I don't care where. Oh. Then it doesn't matter which way you go. What sort of people live around here? That direction lives a hatter. That direction lives a March Hare. Is it either? Both are mad. But I don't want to go around mad people. Oh, you can't help that. We're all mad here. I'm mad. You're mad. How do you know I'm mad? You must be, or you wouldn't have come here. Do you play croquet with the queen today? I should like it very much, but I haven't been invited yet. You'll see me there, meow. Well, he's disappeared into thin air. Meow, by the by, what became of the baby? <laughs> I nearly forgot to ask. It turned into a pig. I always thought it would. Meow! I wonder if he's disappeared for good now. Well, who shall I go to visit? I've seen Hatters before, so I imagine the March Hare will be the most interesting. And 
since this is May, it won't be raving mad. At least not so mad as it was in March. Meow. Did you say pig or fig? I said pig. All right. Meow. This time it vanished quite slowly, beginning with the end of the tail and ending with the grin, which remained some time after the rest of it had gone. So ends the first half of the Columbia Workshop dramatization of Alice in Wonderland. Next Sunday at the same time, the MCT players will present the second half of this immortal classic, Alice's visit to the Mad Tea Party, the Queen's Croquet Game, the Mock Turtle Story, the Lobster Quadrille, and the exciting climax when all Wonderland attends the trial to determine who stole the tarts. The MCT Players radio version of Alice in Wonderland has been directed by David Coon, who has also pushed random buttons for the original musical score. This is the MCT Players broadcasting system. We'll see you next week for part two.